Hi. Building your own reverb design can be a very difficult and time-consuming process. Fortunately, Melda Production has come up with a solution which makes it considerably easier. In this and several following tutorials, we're going to learn all the tools and tricks to build a high quality reverb. First of all, we need to understand what makes a good reverberation sound pleasant, so we can apply this knowledge to our designs. Here's a 2D model of a room with a sound source and listener. On the right is a graph, which will show reflections of the sound the listener receives. I'm going to stretch the process of reverberation and show the events one by one. So the source starts emitting the sound. First, the listener receives a dry sound represented by a red bar here. Then in some time, known as a pre-delay, the first reflections arrive. Next, the second one and so on. In reality, the sound wave coming out of the source extends in all directions simultaneously. Having put all reflections on the graph, we'll notice some important things. First, the reflections never repeat at regular intervals. That's why we never hear the reverberation like this in a real room. Second, the quantity of reflections is increasing as the reverberation is decaying. The proper term for this phenomena is an echo density. Another important thing to know is, each time when a sound wave hits the wall, it loses a part of its energy. This loss is frequency dependent. That's called dampening. If we know how to model these three features, we'll be able to build something decent. In this tutorial series, we'll learn all the tools and tricks M-Turbo Reverb has to offer to achieve this goal. So let's begin. The magic happens here in the designer, and the most crucial part of it is the algorithm. All these letters, numbers, parentheses, square brackets, etc., correspond to modules used in the algorithm. It looks like a cipher. However, it's not so difficult to comprehend. We're going to start with some simple things. All modules can be split into five groups, delays, routers, gain controllers, filters, and special modules. To use a module, all you have to do is type in its symbol. For example, D stands for delay module. It has no feedback nor built-in filters, just a plain delay effect. The module has only one parameter, a delay time. If you want it to have a specific value, you must put it in the parenthesis straight after the module symbol. Here, it's expressed in milliseconds. If you don't specify the value, the designer will do it for you. And here is how. Look at these three sliders, delay min, max, and focus. The delay min and max set the intervals out of which a value is randomly selected. The engine employs a smart randomization algorithm, producing nice combinations of delays to all the modules to use in your algorithms. To get a new set of delays and other hidden values, simply press the Seed button. This way, M-Turbo Reverb saves you from the ugly technicalities you would normally have to deal with when designing a reverb. The focus parameter defines the distribution of short or long delays within the limits set by the delay min and max. The next module I'd like to introduce is the comb filter, presented by the C letter. By the way, upper and lower cases make no difference when writing an algorithm. A comb filter is a delay line with a feedback. In other words, it's the infinite echo and naturally causes a characteristic metallic sound. Comb filters are the most elementary modules for reverb design and all the digital reverberation technology started with them more than 50 years ago. As you'll probably guess, they're not exactly ideal. They cause metallic resonances. Their echo density is constant and the echoes are exact copies of each other. If you'd have to imagine a room that would sound like a comb filter, 
It would probably be an infinity big room without walls made from a perfectly reflective alien material. However, a comb filter is the basic tool for the other stuff we're going to learn. Our comb filter automatically follows the length controller and of course uses the smart randomizing algorithm to get a nice delay time. You can override both the delay time and feedback, however, just enter them as parameters, for example, which means feedback minus one and delay 15 milliseconds. Please check the documentation for details about the syntax and parameters. Now, let's hear the difference in the sound between the positive and the negative types of feedback in the comb filter. Is there a way to improve the sound of a comb filter? Well, for starters, we can use multiple comb filters in parallel. While one comb filter was an infinite room with just a floor and a ceiling, two comb filters can add a pair of parallel walls, right? Well, we would need to simplify the laws of physics a lot, but then it may be something like that. So let's try and write Parallel as P is the first container, meaning that you can insert modules into it. This one processes them in parallel. Another one is serial as S, which executes the modules in series. Instead of this, you can also write, or more, since two comb filters didn't sound too good, let's try 20. Now that sounds much better. A single comb filter creates several resonances in the spectrum. If you have more comb filters, each of them has a different set of resonances. So the effect of the individual comb filter is getting hidden in the cloud of echoes. You might then think that with enough comb filters, you can avoid resonances completely. But sadly, that's not true. And mainly it would overload any CPU. That's why the maximum number you can write is 100. You can still write, which creates 200 comb filters in parallel, but please don't. We will learn much better ways to do what we want to do. Another problem is that the echo density of our new reverb is still constant and there's no dampening whatsoever. And that's a vital part of any realistic reverb, but it's a good start. Let's check the next module, the all pass or A. It looks like a comb filter, but employs two internal feedbacks. An all pass filter actually doesn't have any resonances, so it has a perfectly flat spectrum response we seek. Unfortunately, only mathematically speaking, in an infinite time, the response would be flat, but our brains are faster than that, so we'll always hear the temporary resonances. But if the delay is short enough, it can sound nearly flat. So it works great as a diffuser, and we will call it that way from now on. Time to try the serial container, right? These are three diffusers in series. You can also write just 3A or AAA because the serial container is there by default. In other words, if you write CCAA, you would create two combs and two diffusers in series. While three all pass filters in series sounds quite useful, you're probably wondering what three combs would do. Let's see. That's probably not too encouraging. It only makes the whole thing resonate more. 
much more. Now's the time to build one of the first reverbs ever, the Schroeder Reverb. Mr. Schroeder had to work hard to build it. All you need to do is enter, which means four parallel comb filters followed by two diffusers. And let's make it better by using more comb filters. There you have it, your first reverb. Don't forget the seed button. Each click generates new delay times for each module. You've noticed, of course, the sound has become stereo. The reason for it is this controller, the delay width. It regulates the difference between delay times of the same modules in the left and right channels. Without this, the echoes of both channels would be the same and the reverb would be monophonic. There's one more cool tool we're going to utilize, hashtag. By introducing the hashtag to the algorithm, we hook up the complexity parameter to it. Let's try the parallel comb filters again, but smarter. Instead of wondering whether 11 comb filters sound better than 10, I can just write, now the complexity controller will set the comb filter's number. You can insert the hashtag in front of any module. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.